I was thrilled to be asked to be uh, to be a part of this. I was a fan of of the first two movies, um, although only one had been released when I was asked to be a part of it. So I had seen the first one, and then was very excited to see the second one, and then they asked me to be a part of it, and I said okay. And then the second one came out, and it was better than the first. You know, it was just, it was, I don't think I'm talking out of school there. It was even it was even better. I don't mean to say that the first one stunk, but you know what I mean. And it was so I was like, oh my god, this is so cool, and I get to be in the third one, and the third one's going to be totally different, and it's going to be this whole other thing. And then and then eventually I found out like what the plan was to sort of tell this kind of origin story, this prequel kind of idea about, which I thought was so creative and so cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess I was just like, I kind of felt honored, you know? I don't know, is that weird to say? Like I just sort of felt happy to be asked to play in the sandbox, to play in the fun sandbox. It's a great company to keep. Yes, Kevin, Bob, and Stu, good company. What do you think it is that, that people of all ages, it really doesn't matter, six or 106? I th yeah, you know, I think it's interesting. I think that, I think that there's something so pure about about the minions experience they just are kind of these agents of chaos a eh? but they also are sort of fascinated by everything in their world they're just sort of very observant to their own detriment sometimes they're supposed to be doing something else and they're sort of get distracted by something over here uh, but generally what they get distracted by is something fun or funny or somebody's butt or a banana or you know so whatever it is it's it's something funny to them and they take the moment it's a good lesson they take the moment to kind of laugh at it and experience that and enjoy it um, so I think that's really what maybe resonates I think maybe even subconsciously uh, with people is that that's very childlike that kind of um, getting lost in you're supposed to do something, but you kind of get lost in something that you want to do more because it's more fun or fascinating or whatever it is, you know? It's sort of like Ferdinand the Bold, you know, s smelling the roses when he's supposed to be doing whatever he does. So I think, you know, it's, that's like what I think is the, is the biggest part of what resonates for, for adults. And kids just like it because they're hilarious. Um. Herb um, may be one of the grooviest guys ever to come to film. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about Herb and, and who this man is? Well, he's is? got great style. I know that. He's very stylish. Um, and then, you know, so it, the, the fun thing was when they showed me what he looks like, I was like, oh, okay. This guy's kind of got a, a, as you say, a groovy sensibility. And so I was trying to figure out how he might sound. And, um, and that's the fun part about doing animated stuff is that you're not kind of constrained about how you look or how your hair looks one day or whatever, you know, however you're feeling that day, you just can kind of go crazy with it. And that, um, that was, I don't know, for whatever reason, that's to me what he sounded like. And then we kind of worked on it a little and refined it a little bit. But, um, you know, Herb is a very, um, he has a lot in common with the Minions. Like he likes to have, he really enjoys his life. He really enjoys what he does. He really loves his wife. He loves making things for her, and he loves doing, you know, things for her. And then he likes to have fun too. So when these three little yellow balls of energy come into his life, he kind of is intrigued. Like, what are these things? And then, like, oh my God, they're so fun! Like, we can have so much fun together. This will be great. We can really like. I know I'm supposed to torture them, and I know I'm supposed to like scare them and everything. But we'll get to that eventually. But right now, like, let's do like something really fun. You know, like, I think that's what Herb's kind of overarching sensibility is. Is like fun you know he wants to have a good time and take over the world as a second yeah as a second um, maybe maybe one in one a herb and scarlet have um a fairly unusual relationship for the 60s in that she's the the face and the the one that's presented to the world while herb's more behind the scenes and working from home but they are fully partners no yes i agree and you know yes scarlet is the face of the enterprise so to speak, and uh, because she's beautiful and she's got the sort of uh, telegenic qualities that you need to, to run an evil empire. Uh, whereas Herb is a little more behind the scenes, he's the, he's the, he's the brains behind it. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, 
but yes, they're, they're very much each other's complement, I think, is the right way to put that. And he brings out the, the softer side of her so that she's not just this hard edge exactly. villain. Exactly. And he's, he's just there to support her. He is there to support her. He's there to uh, comfort her and then also make sure that she is very well armed with laser beams and lava lamp guns and nuclear weapons and body armor that's shaped like a very pretty dress, things like that. He's quite the romantic too. I love the scene where he gives her a card. Yes. When he he's when gives she's her back. love notes, then then explains the love notes, and uh, yes, he is very. You know, he's 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 into it. He loves his wife. That's like that's a nice thing. <laughs> and nice for kids to see in an animated film. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. You know. As an inventor. <clears throat> you, you talked about how he provides certain things mm -hmm. for Scarlett to enable her to do what she needs to do. Um, did you have any favorites of the things that her have had? The helmet? I liked, you know, I liked a lot of them. And I liked, what I really liked was that her paid a lot of attention to kind of how, how, the, like, design of them. It, weren't just, it wasn't just a practical um, Approach, but there was very much a design, and a, and, a, and a, he has a very cool design aesthetic, um, and it seems very her. It's very mod. It's very mod. I wouldn't want to say modern. It's very mod. Um, it's very groovy. Um, my favorite has got to be the hypno hat, just sort of like a weird beret that gives you tele, tele psycho telegenetic telekinesis powers, some sort of whatever that word is. Um, but you need to be very careful with said hat or it can be uh, a disaster. I wonder if anything will go wrong. Um, but yeah, it's, a, you know, they're, it's super cool. It's, I, I like Herb's whole style. Is this one time that you almost wish this was live action so you could take the wardrobe with you? Well, I would have to lose so much weight to fit in his clothing. First of all, he's, two-dimensional so that's an issue um, but he's very skinny he's comically skinny um, you have to understand that like clothes on animated people fit differently you'll notice that the minions wear overalls right part of an overalls entire thing is that they hang by straps on your shoulders the minions don't have shoulders how are those overalls staying up we don't know. We don't know. Tape. Screws. Glue. We don't know. You know what? We don't need to know. They just are. Don't worry about it. Be explained in the sequel. Yeah, there'll be a whole movie about their overalls. It'll be it called was, Overalls. It was kind of cool, though, considering that this is an origin story to see how they actually come to their overalls. I agree, and I thought that was that was that part was very cool. The whole the whole idea of getting us into this story was a very interesting thing. And then, of course, this leading into Gru and, and the Despicable Me stuff it was uh, very cool as well. So I, I thought it was nice to see how these little fellows came into being. Um, can you talk a little bit more about your voice? Because one of the things I thought was so great that it's not immediately recognizable as John Hamm. And a lot well, of I think what people think, too, is that it's not immediately recognizable as Don Draper. Uh, that's what I think people are really a little more surprised at. I, I definitely don't sound in my real life like Don Draper either, um, as you can tell. Um, uh, you know, I think people for the longest time, because who maybe didn't know me or, or spent a lot of time with me or see me being me in person, uh, just assumed that I was Don Draper because I look like Don Draper and I wear the same suits as Don Draper and that's so I must be Don Draper. That's how I always sound. I always sound sort of resonant and cool and and very, uh, 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 you know, uh, baritone and all of that stuff. I don't. That's kind of what I do when I do Don Draper. Um, but, you know, part of the fun part of doing voice acting and, and especially being kind of a crazy cool character in, in, a, in an animated film is that you get to really play around with your voice, you know, and I, I don't have the instrument that Bill Hader has or Amy Poehler or some of these people that have just crazy, you know, flexible voices, for want of a better word, 
But I can do a little something, you know, I can do some voices and some tricks and some this and some that's. So, um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think, I'm glad that it's not immediately recognizable as something because I'm glad people can just look at it and be like, oh, that's a funny character. Oh, that's John Hamill, oh, great. Pierre and um, Kyle were both so thrilled with your um, ad-libs and your just ability to, to go off the page during all the voice sessions. Did you have fun with that? I had a blast doing that and, and you know, a big part of like what makes this process so collaborative is that they're there. Um, whether they're on Skype, you know, sometimes Pierre would Skype in from France where they did a lot of the animation, a lot of the production on the film, but, but oftentimes they would be in the studio, you know, in person. Uh, and Brian as well, and you would say, well, what about this? And like, maybe, is that funnier, or is this funnier? Or you'd say something just kind of ad lib it, and it would get a laugh, and say, okay, well, do we like that better? You know, and the, that's the good thing about it, is if you record it, you have it, you can use it, you can plug it in, you can pull it out, you can trade it out with other jokes, and and so that's part of the fun of it. You know, you get to, you get to make these choices and decisions, and if they don't work, you just hit delete, and that's it and you don't have to worry about it, you know? And working with the guys, um, Sandra told us when we talked to her that um, they were really there for her as actors and, you know, they were there off camera where sometimes your partner yes. isn't there. So how was your experience with Stuart, Bob, and Kevin? Um, well, great, because, you know, I mean, it's, what Pierre does with those voices are, are, is, is amazing. Um, they're so specific, it's so specific and yet it's seemingly so random. Do you know what I mean? Um, and so it's, he's, it's such a facile command of not only whatever language they're speaking, but the mixture of, of all of those languages. Because I was saying to somebody else, it's like only like someone that was raised in Europe can kind of seemingly have that many languages to choose from right at the tip of their, the tip of their tongue. Um, and it's, it's a fun kind of game to listen to what words the minions do have, and like, what, is that Greek? Like, why would they pick Greek for that? Oh God, they know Greek? Of course they know Greek, because they used to be minions for Alexander the Great or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, it, it makes sense in its own weird uh, uh, logic, but it's, it's, very, it's very cool. And I think it's very nice like, to let kids know that, 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 you know, learning other languages is actually kind of interesting and cool. I mean, I, I, I think there should be an app for learning, learning languages with the minions, I think. And if anybody does that, I'm getting a piece of it. Such a hard thing to say. Um, 